Hello and welcome back to A-Level Biology Help. Today I'm going to be taking you through the stem cell section for AQA A-Level Biology. Near the end of the video, I'll be going through a few exam style questions and explain their mark schemes. And as always, there will be timestamps in the comment section so that you can skip to the different sections of the video if you do not wish to watch the whole thing. Right, so let's get started. So what are stem cells? Stem cells are, well, they specialised cells, so your, for example, root hair cells, etc., originate as stem cells. So stem cells are undifferentiated cells that can continually divide and become specialised. So stem cells are cells that do not have any kind of specialisation, and we call this undifferentiated. So stem cells can then go on to differentiate into specialised cells. Differentiation is a process in which stem cells can become specialised to have specific functions. So there are different types of stem cells that we are going to go through today. So totipotent, pluripotent, multipotent and unipotent. Also we are going to talk about IPS stem cells. So let's start with totipotent stem cells. Totipotent stem cells can differentiate into any type of body cell, so any type of cell at all. Now, something that my biology teacher used to teach me was that totipotent kind of sounds like total potential. So totipotent stem cells have the total potential to differentiate into any type of body cell. So that might be a way that you can remember this. So during development, these totipotent stem cells can only translate part of their DNA, so only certain genes are switched on. So this can result in specialisation, so differentiation. So totipotency can only occur for a limited time in very early mammalian embryos. So totipotency is only maintained for the first couple of divisions of a zygote. So here we just have an image of a totipotent stem cell. So totipotent stem cells aren't available for a very long time. So they can differentiate into any type of cell. The next type of stem cells are pluripotent stem cells. So pluripotent stem cells are found in embryos. Pluripotent stem cells can divide in unlimited numbers and differentiate, differentiate into almost any type of cell. So they can't differentiate into every single type of cell like totipotent cells can, but they can differentiate into almost any type of cell. Pluripotent cells are used in treating human disorders. For example, regrowth of damaged skin, skin cells from a burn, or they can be used to regrow beta cells if they're damaged in type 1 diabetes. And also neurons can be grown from pluripotent stem cells to treat diseases, diseases such as Parkinson's or Alzheimer's. However, there are many issues associated with pluripotent stem cells. The first one is that obviously they can divide in unlimited numbers. And if these pluripotent stem cells can continue to divide, this can lead to a formation of a tumour, which would obviously be detrimental and would outweigh the benefits by far. Also, we have the issue of ethical problems because pluripotent stem cells are found in embryos and obviously if you want to grow a certain type of cell, you will need to destro destroy the embryo at the end of your experiment. Obviously, this provides ethical problems, so the destruction of an embryo is unethical in some people's eyes. Also, is it right for humans to be cloned to produce these embryos? So now I'm going to take you on to multipotent and unipotent stem cells. So these, both of these types of stem cells are found in mature mammals, so are not found in, in embryos. So they are not embryonic stem cells. So multipotent stem cells differentiate into a limited number of cells, so only a few types of cells. So bone marrow is an example of a multipotent stem cell. So bone marrow can di differentiate into only types of blood cells. So white blood cells, red blood cells, etc. 
So there is a limited number of cells that multipotent stem cells can differentiate into. However, unipotent, as the name suggests, can only differentiate into one type of cell, for example, cardiomyocytes, which are the muscle cells that make up the heart. So unipotent stem cells can only differentiate into one type of cell. So now I'm, now I'm going to talk about iPS cells. IPS stands for induced pluripotent stem cells. So IPS cells are created from adult unipotent cells, or sometimes these are called somatic cells. So they are not created from embryos or anything like that. They are created from normal adult unipotent cells. So stem cells that only differentiate into one type of cell. So adult unipotent cells. These adult or somatic cells are then treated with proteins called transcription factors. The job of these transcription factors are to switch on genes, so initiate their transcription, that induce pluripotency. So this makes them more undifferentiated. So basically, induced pluripotent stem cells are stem are pluripotent stem cells, so in undifferentiated stem cells that are produced from differentiated adult body cells by transcription factors. So iPS cells have many advantages compared with other types of stem cells. The main one is that it destroys many ethical problems because iPS cells don't cause embryonic destruction as iPS cells are produced from adult cells. Also iPS cells can have a property called self-renewal this means that they can divide indefinitely, so to give a limitless supply. So they can be used for a long time. Also, they can be used in medical treatment instead of embryonic stem cells. So again, removing ethical issues. Right, so that is it for the content. And now I'm going to get on to some exam style questions. <coughs> so if I just get my highlighter out. Right, so plant physiologists attempted to produce papaya plants using tissue culture. They investigated the effects of different concentrations of two plant growth factors on small pieces of the stem tip from the papaya plant. Their results are shown in the table. So they are measuring the effects of two different growth factors. So here we have a concentration of auxin. And here we have the concentration of cytokinin, both in micromole per decimeter cubed. So here's the question. So callus is a mass of undifferentiated plant cells. And plantlets are small plants. Explain the evidence from the table that cells from the stem tip are totipotent. So remembering that totipotent cells are when there are stem cells that can differentiate into any type of cell. So if we look at the table, we need to find where it says callus. So here we have callus here and callus here. So we need to find evidence that these are totipotent. So as you can see, new plants are produced when um, the cells from the stem tip are used. So plantlets are produced here. So suggesting that new plants are produced as plantlets are small new plants. So here's what I've written. They give rise to new plantlets as plantlets are produced and leaves are produced as shown in the table. So this is evidence on the table. So this means that they must be able to differentiate as the different types of plant matter are produced. So therefore, given evidence that um, they have totipotency. So let's look at the mark scheme. First marking point, gives rise to new plants or plantlets. We wrote give rise to new plantlets, so we will get the first mark. And the second marking point says, so they must be able to develop into different tissues or other specialised cell types or must be able to differentiate. We put, they must be able to differentiate, so we would get the second mark. So we would get all two marks for this question. Also, it says here, for marking point one, ignore references to leaves slash calluses. Because in the question here, it says it's asking you about plantlets. So if we move on to the next question, 
It says calculate the ratio of cytokinin to auxin that you would recommend to grow papaya plants by this method. Right, so let's look at the table. So it's pretty difficult to calculate ratios when the um, numbers aren't really that clear. However, I've written that this is 5 to 1. I've written this because, as you can see, when there is 5 micromoles, of decim micromoles per decimeter cubed of cytokinin, we have 1 micromole per decimeter cubed of um, auxin. Now, I've chosen these data because leaves are produced in these, both of these. And obviously there is 5 and then 1, so the ratio of cytokinin to auxin is 5 to 1. So it's important that you do not get these numbers mixed round. So you don't get the mark so you don't get the mark if you write one to five. You just need to put the five to one. So if we look at the mark scheme, the mark scheme says two marks of five to one. So we would get both marks for the question. Also you can put fifty to ten, so an unsimplified answer, or one to zero point two. So also it says here, one mark for ratio correctly identified but expressed incorrectly as 1 to 5 or 10 to 50 or 0 0.2 to 1. So you can actually get one mark if you get the um, numbers mixed round. But this is technically incorrect as it's asking you for the ratio of cytokinin to auxin, not the ratio of auxin to, to cytokinin. So let's move on. The question says, papaya plants reproduce sexually by means of seeds. Papaya plants grown from seeds are very variable in their yield. Explain why. So the question says here reproduce sexually and that they are very variable. Explain why. So you need to justify your answers. So sexual reproduction will probably make you think of meiosis and then fertilisation of gametes. And it says here that the seeds are very variable. So this question is ask, basically asking you to describe how sexual reproduction can produce variation. So this is what I've suggested. So crossing over during meiosis and the random fertilization of gametes. So these two things produce variation. So let's look at the mark scheme. So the first marking point, you could put meiosis or independent assortment or crossing over. We wrote about crossing over so we would get a mark. The second marking point says fusion of gene genetically different gametes or random fertilisation of gametes. We wrote about random fertilisation of gametes, so we would get the second mark. So we would get all two marks for the question. So if we move on, explain the advantage explain of growing papaya seeds from tissue culture rather than from seeds. So tissue culture is when um, cells are produced from a single tissue. This suggests that um, reproduction will be asexual so therefore just mitosis will occur. So mitosis produces genetically identical daughter cells so obviously the main advantage of this will be they will be genetically identical but from seeds um, meiosis may occur so therefore the, um, the daughter cells producing papaya plants will be genetically different which will obviously be not advantageous as um, some of the genetically different plants may have disadvantages. So if you look at the mark scheme they will be clones or produced by mitosis or will be genetically identical. We put genetically identical so we'd get the mark. Or you can write less variation slash all plants will have desired characteristics. So you can put any one of these to get the mark. Also here it says if the reference is to identical it must be genetically identical as a key term here is genetically, but allow a less variation without reference to genetical. So if you wrote about that there is less variation, however you didn't write genetic about genetical, you can still get a mark. If you wrote just about identical and not about less variation, you do not get the mark. Right, that is all I want to say for this video. Thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions, big or small, please leave a comment and I'll see you in the next video.